Welcome back. In Cadence, plots are typically drawn in these windows with black backgrounds and very thin plot curves, which is good enough to read by eye, but is not particularly ideal to take screenshots from for, for example, a paper. In that case, you would want more control over how your plot looks. And for that reason, it would be very nice to export the data of a plot from Cadence and then make your plots in a program like MATLAB, which has much easier plot control. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. How do we plot data of traces from Cadence in MATLAB? And let's do that with this nice waveform over here, which is a simple sine wave. If we want to export the data of a waveform, we first select it by clicking on it and then going to Trace, Export, and then we can give it a nice name. Let's call it sine wave. Now also make sure that we select the CSV file format. The VCSV file format cannot be interpreted by MATLAB. There is also the possibility of using the MATLAB file format, the .mat file, but CSV is supported by more programs. So if you don't want to work with MATLAB, but instead with something like Python or any different language, CSV is more likely to be supported. In the second video, I showed you how to set up a shared folder between X2Go and your local PC. If you save something to that folder, it will automatically be sent to your local PC. And since we want to use the data of this plot in MATLAB, we should therefore save the file to that folder so we can use it in MATLAB on our local PC. We can find that shared folder by first going to your home folder on the Ankarami server and then going to Media, Disk, and then choosing the shared folder in there. Click on Save. And now the file is saved to the shared folder. That means that it should show up on our local PC. So let's move to Windows and see if we can find the file. And indeed, we can find it in our shared folder. So that's the hard part already taken care of. Let's copy that file to a different folder where we can start working on the data. And paste the file. Next, we can open up MATLAB. Then we'll first make sure that we're working from our project folder. We can do that by clicking on this little button over here and then browsing to the folder where we've saved our data file. If we selected the right folder, we can now go to current folder over here and we indeed see the sine wave file. Then we'll create a new MATLAB script in the same folder by going to new, script and clicking on save. We can give it a good name. Let's call it plot sine wave, press enter. And now we have our own script set up. To extract the data from our CSV file, we can use the read table function. We do that with a line of code like this, where we pass the file name as an argument and then save everything to this variable called data. Click on run. If we double click on the data variable, we see the table appear over here. In the first column, we can see the values of the time axis. And in the second column, we can see the values of the sine wave. Notice the names on top of these columns x in x and x in y. We can use those names to extract the time and the voltage from the data table like this using this dot notation. The only thing that remains is writing some basic plotting code. So let's do that. The only thing that remains is adding some standard plotting code, which could look something like this. These two lines open a new figure in MATLAB and plot the time against the voltage. These two lines add labels to the x and y axes this line adds a title above the plot. The grid on line adds a grid to the background of the plot. Finally, this line ensures that the waveform fills the entire horizontal axis of our plot window. With all of that set up, the only thing we have to do anymore is click on Run, which gives us a plot that looks like this, which already looks quite nice. To now save this plot to a file, we can go to File, Export Setup, and Export. We can then choose a name for the file and pick one of many different image formats. Among these are, for example, PNG images, JPEG images, but also vector-based formats like the EPS file. I would personally recommend to always use EPS files when working with papers, because in that case, you can zoom in indefinitely on the image without it becoming grainy, like what would happen when you zoom in indefinitely on a JPEG. But for now, Let's just go for a regular JPEG. Click on save. And then if we move back into the folder where we saved the CSV file, 
we now indeed see our JPEG file. And there's the plot. That already closes off our last video in the series on using Cadence. If you followed along, you now know how to set up your own simulation and process its results. Naturally, we've only barely scratched the surface of what Cadence is capable of. But with these new tools on your belt, you should be well equipped to learn those very quickly. If you have any remaining questions regarding Cadence, feel free to leave a comment down below and please consider subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching and I wish you the best of luck in your future circuit designs. See you around.